IRB put up a notice to say, beginning 1st March 2019, they no longer accept manual forms. Whether this is true or not, let's cover you on how to use the EPCB portal. When is the best time for you to use PCB portal? Now, the best time for you to use PCB portal undoubtedly will be January 2019 contribution, which means this month. Why? It's because PCB calculation always go by 12 months average, which means that if you go in during May, then you have to key in your data or you have to extract your data from January to April, which is hectic. So it's best for you to start now, which is January 2019. Let's jump into the PCB portal. Go to eklshasio.jov.my and then if you are a new user, click on the Panguna Baru, a new registration, and then they'll ask you to put in your e-number. Once you send your e-number, they'll ask you to fill up this form. These are the details that you key in, your name, your addresses, which I don't want to go through with you. You just key in everything and then just click send. Once completed, they will send you a confirmation email and you just need to verify the email and then you can start logging in with the ID and password. Once you log in into the portal, you will see this page. So you can always edit the information that you see by pressing Kemaskini Majikan to edit. And then you can always change the details here. And then you just click send. The first initial setup, you need to set up your employee group by clicking Kumpulan Pekerja here. And you can see this is a fresh start, which I don't have any information. So what I should do is to add a Kumpulan Pekerja, a group, and then I need to come up with the group names. You can put SDC Heroes, you can put Marvel's Heroes, up to you. In my case, I'll put ANC Hub. And then all the details that I have, who is the officer in charge, and then I will send and save. Then you have this group. You can always edit or you can always delete the group if you want. So you can always pick here. So how do we add an employee? Go to Pekerja, click on Tamba Pekerja. So first thing you can put is which employee group, what is their name, what is their IC, what is their passport, where they come from, and then uh, what is the status of marriage, whether they are disabled or whether their spouse are disabled. Now, I just want to talk a bit more on this one, which is the category of employees. So what is Permaus Tautin? Now, Permaus Tautin in Malay uh, means it's resident. So if you are tax resident where you have been in Malaysia for more than 182 days, you are tax resident, you choose Permaus Tautin. If you are non-resident, then you go for Bukan Permaus Tautin. So if you are uh, REP workers, go for REP. If you are knowledge worker, go for IRDA. After that, you can add the individual's children details by clicking the plus and then it will lead you to this page where they ask you to put in whether your children has uh, less than 18 years old whether they are disabled whether they are whether they are studying in university so forth so all this will affect your pcb calculation once done click save and you will have the name of employees you can always click the name of the employees to double check that information and these are the things that you can do now how do we calculate our pcb go to kira pcb and click kira pcb stroke cb39 so here you need to choose the group you need to choose the month and you need to choose the year for which contribution and then you click send i realize a lot of people can't understand how the pcb works reason being the portal is very lame because it looks so so old school but to be frank it's actually quite direct and quite easy to use you just need to focus on your left this seven option where they stated one two three four five six seven so the first one is the calculation of pcb once you click kira pcb they will show you the list of employees so what you should do is you click the employee you need to calculate your pcb for new employees who has never worked before during the year remember to untick this box and then you press Kira, calculate. If you've never worked before, very simple. You just need to put in your present income, your present EPF, your present BIK and VOLA, then you can save. After save, they will show you this employee, how much is the PCB. Let's go to calculate our second employee, Kira PCB, and then click select. This employee 
has worked before during the year. When you calculate this employee, you need to put a tick here and then you calculate. Let's do two case studies. This employee joined us during August 2018 and he has been working from January 2018 until July 2018. So what I should do is I need to send a TP3 to them so that they can fill up the form, complete the form and inform us how much he has been earning from January 2018 until July 2018. Why? Because this will affect your PCB calculation. So once you collected the information, you will have to put here the accumulated income during the year. For existing employee who are using ePCB, you don't have to worry because when you use this ePCB, they already accumulate the data from the prior months. Once you key in the accumulated pay, the accumulated EPF, then you can go on to do your present month pay. So the present month pay is 8,000, for example, and then your EPF for that month, for example, is 880, so just put it here. You can go on to add this column, which is Saraan Tambahan, where you have additional remuneration. For example, you have bonuses, you have one of director fee, compensation. This will fall under additional remuneration. You can also add deduction and rebates. So this one is making reference to your TP1 form. Once you click save and process, you will come to this page where they show you now we have two employees. This is the PCB you need to pay. Once you calculate your PCB, the next thing is to make a payment, correct? So you can go to number two, which is the payment details. In payment details, what you need to do is you can update the type of payment you are making. For example, if you are making transfer or if you are making payment to IRB, the check number, you can always update here and then you can save. Let's go to number three, which is the person in charge. When you click the person in charge, you will see the names here, the IC numbers, the destination, the phone numbers. You can always edit and then you can press send to update. Number four, let's go to submission and payment. You click on number four, pengesahan, and then it will show you a summary of the page, how much you need to pay. You drag to the last part of this page and you will see the save button called simpan. Once you save it, means you already submitted. So what you need to do is you have to print out your acknowledgement slip and as well as proceed to making payment. Let's talk about number five. Now, number five and number six is something extra, which once you get used to it, you don't need actually. So what is number five? Number five is export of bank TXT. So number five, save a text file for you to pay through the bank. Number six is printing a form for your record purposes. So you click number six and it will generate this form for your record. Number seven is for amendment purposes. So let's say you have submitted but haven't made payment and you realize you make a mistake. You can always go to number seven. Then you change the status, resubmit again and make a payment. There you go, this is ePCB portal. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends who has this problem as well. I am Song and I'll see you in the next video.